Have you ever had severe burning pain on the lateral aspect of your leg? Or maybe even a little bit of numbness? What is that? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 38-year-old female who came to my office with just those complaints. She's had these symptoms off and on for many years, but over the past year, it's gotten significantly worse. She's a type 1 diabetic, and she's had three C-sections. I mentioned that she struggled with weight loss, and she's gained about 30 pounds in the past year. Here is the location in her leg where her symptoms are mostly located. I mentioned that it's worse when she works out, and please note that when she goes to the gym, she usually wears really tight leggings. After she failed physical therapy, her primary care doctor sent her for an MRI of her lumbar spine that showed this. I did mention that she's had back pain since her pregnancies, and what you see on this MRI is an L5-S1 disc bulge. And a lot of you guys took the bait that I was trying to give out. Here's the classic dermatome man and where our nerves in our lumbar spine tend to go in our leg. Where she's complaining of the pain, it's kind of like this L3 region not L5S1. And I mentioned that she had a lumbar epidural injection and got no relief. So like many people that I see in my practice, she has an asymptomatic disc bulge, meaning her MRI shows pathology, but that's not matching up to the symptoms that she complains about. That's why it's critical to obtain a good history and physical examination before you make a diagnosis. I also gave her labral tear a possible diagnosis, but she really doesn't have any hip pain. And in a labral tear, patients will often complain of a catching or clicking in their hips. And answer D was absolutely ridiculous. Of course, she's not attention seeking. This woman is in pain. We take all of our patients' complaints seriously. This woman has a mononeuropathy in her thigh called neuralgia paresthetica. It's an entrapment of our lateral femoral cutaneous nerve as it travels underneath the inguinal ligament. It classically causes all the symptoms that our patient has. What can happen is the nerve actually gets entrapped as it runs underneath that ligament and causes nerve pain. Extension of the hips can worsen that pain. On physical examination, you can test for that just like this, and what happens is that will further pull the nerve over the ligament and intensify the symptoms. You can actually flex the hip and compress the iliac crest, which will decrease the tension on the inguinal ligament and make the patient's pain a little better. Those are little tricks that you can do when you're examining the patient to help make the diagnosis. It can be challenging to make the diagnosis because it often mimics other conditions. Understanding all of these things are incredibly important to help make the diagnosis. It can also be labeled as Bernhardt-Roth syndrome or lateral cutaneous neuropathy. Please remember that this nerve is only a sensory nerve, so it only can cause sensory symptoms. That means pain, paresthesias, and sensory loss, but no weakness. You will need to rule out a hip problem or problems in the upper lumbar spine, L1 to L3. It's typically diagnosed in adults ages 30 to 40, and it's more common in males. Risk factors are obesity with a BMI greater than 30, pregnancy, tight-fitting clothes such as jeans or leggings, wearing something really heavy on your waist such as tool belts or gun belts in construction workers or police officers, even surgery to this area like hip surgery. I've actually seen it in a lot of my patients after we position them prone on the bed that we use for spine surgery because the pad will put a lot of pressure right over that nerve and can cause transient symptoms. Even patients that carry a lot in their front pocket, like their wallet or their cell phone, that can cause a lot of pressure overlying that region as well and make the symptoms worse. The reason why pregnancy and obesity makes it worse, because that belly can hang and put tension over the nerve as well. Remember I mentioned that she was a type 1 diabetic? Neuropathies can be exacerbated in people with diabetes. That's because people with diabetes, their nerve healing is impaired. That's why over 40% of diabetics will have coexisting peripheral neuropathy. So how do you make the diagnosis? I kind of told you already, it's really made by mostly the history and physical examination. Imaging studies such as MRI can help rule out a hip problem or a problem with the lower back. A nerve conduction study or EMG will be negative. Remember, that's because this is a sensory nerve and it doesn't go to muscle. And that's what an EMG is going to test. Diagnostic injection or a shot of steroids overlying the affected nerve can help make the diagnosis. The good news is this almost always resolves with conservative treatment. Wearing looser clothes, taking items out of your front pocket that's causing compression, taking those heavy belts off around your waist, and of course, losing weight. 
In pregnancy, the symptoms usually resolve after delivery because the abdomen is not quite as big. Medical management includes anti-inflammatory medications. Steroid injections may give you some relief of the symptoms, and neuromodulating medications such as gabapentin or neurotin can help the symptoms. Even tricyclic antidepressants can help as well because they help relieve pain. Surgery to decompress a nerve is almost never needed, and in fact, I have never performed this surgery in my practice. Believe it or not, I have actually had Myralgia Parasitica twice, and I can empathize because it is incredibly painful. I had it once related to a hip surgery that I had to repair a labral tear when I was in residency. And I had it for about 18 months after I had my mommy makeover, likely related to the compression garments that I was wearing, and it was so painful. I had to take gabapentin for months, and then once the pain subsided, I had a loss of sensation in my leg for about 18 months. I couldn't even feel that region when I was shaving. And in my case, and in our patient's case, it both resolved with conservative treatment. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.